I want to talk to you about something that honestly has me a little rattled. And I think once you hear what I'm about to share, you're going to understand why. NASA just dropped new data on this interstellar comet called 3i Atlas. And look, I know we've been talking about this object for a while now, but what came out today? It's not what anyone expected. Not even close. Every single time the scientific community thinks they've finally figured out what this thing is doing, Every time they think they can predict its next move, the comet just throws all of that out the window. It's like it has a mind of its own. And honestly, that's what makes this so fascinating and, if I'm being completely honest with you, a little unsettling. Before we continue, if this has your attention, you can subscribe, turn on notifications, and hit like anytime. And for the best viewing, switch to full screen and enjoy what's coming next. So let me walk you through what NASA released today. Because this isn't just another routine update. This is the kind of data that makes scientists sit back in their chairs and go, wait, what? And trust me, by the time we get through all of this, you're going to see why this comet is refusing to play by any of the rules we thought we understood. All right, so here's the situation. Today's data release wasn't just a single image or a quick observation report. No, this was the full package. We're talking updated light curves, which basically track how bright the comet is over time. We got fresh spectra, which tell us what chemicals and elements are present in the gases coming off this thing. And we got these high-resolution image stacks from multiple spacecraft and ground-based observatories all working together. Now, on paper, when you look at where 3i Atlas is in its journey right now, this should have been the part of the story where everything starts to settle down. Think about it. The comet already made its closest approach to the sun. That moment has passed. It's now moving away from the sun, heading back out into the cold darkness of space. The amount of solar energy hitting it is dropping with every passing day. And here's the thing about normal comets. When they move away from the sun, they calm down. Their activity fades. The jets of gas and dust shooting off them get weaker and weaker. All that wild behavior they showed when they were close to the sun, it starts to taper off. It's predictable. It's what comets do. Except 3i Atlas apparently didn't get that memo because it is, is doing absolutely none of that. Let me tell you about the first thing that caught everyone's attention in today's data. The activity level. Scientists have been carefully measuring how much gas and dust this comet is producing. And they've been comparing those measurements week after week when they looked at last week's numbers and then compared them to what came out today. They were expecting to see a steady decline. That's what the models predicted. That's what should happen. Instead, what they got was a plateau. The activity stayed high. And then, even more bizarrely, they saw a bump. The numbers actually went up. The gas output from this comet hasn't been dropping the way it's supposed to. In fact, when you look at certain specific measurements, especially the ones tracking carbon dioxide and some of the dust-related scattering in the coma, the activity has actually ticked back up. Now... It's not as high as it was at peak perihelion, which was that closest point to the sun, but it's high enough that you can't just dismiss it as measurement error, or a calibration issue, or random noise in the data. This comet is still actively pumping out material. It's still firing on all cylinders, so to speak, even though by all rights it should be winding down. Now, that alone would be strange enough. An outbound comet showing ramped up activity? That's already a red flag. But then you look at the second piece of today's data, and things get even weirder. The new image stacks that were released today show something really remarkable about the inner coma. That's the tight, bright glow immediately surrounding the nucleus of the comet. And what these images reveal is that this inner coma is more structured now than it has ever been throughout this entire observation campaign. Let me give you some context here. Earlier in this whole saga, scientists watched the coma go through all these different phases. Sometimes it looked smooth and uniform. Other times, it looked lopsided, with more brightness on one side than the other. There were periods where it looked almost hollow in the center. Then it took on this ring-like appearance, and then it went back to having a bright central core with a couple of prominent jets shooting off to the sides. It's been this constantly evolving, shape-shifting thing. And just when observers think they've seen all its tricks, it does something new. Well, today's images add yet another evolution to that list, and this one is particularly striking. When you take these images and enhance the contrast, 
when you subtract out the average background brightness to really bring out the fine details, you start to see these layers. Concentric shells, one inside the other, like the rings you see when you drop a stone into a still pond. Except, instead of water ripples, these are ripples made of dust and gas, frozen in space as they expand outward from the nucleus. There's a bright inner region. Then you move outward, and there's a fainter band, and then farther out still, there's another brighter band. They're not perfectly circular because everything's being warped by the jets shooting off the comet and by the motion of the whole system through space. But they're clear enough that multiple independent processing pipelines, multiple teams analyzing the data separately, all picked up the same pattern. So, what does this pattern tell us? What does it mean when you see these concentric shells? It tells you something very specific about the comet's behavior. It tells you that 3 I Atlas hasn't just been consistently active or consistently quiet. It's been pulsing. It's been going through bursts of activity, separated in time, and each one of those bursts gets frozen into space as this expanding shell of material. Think of it like this. Every time the comet has a major outburst, it ejects a bunch of material all at once. That material starts expanding outward into space. Then some time passes, the comet has another outburst, and that creates another expanding shell. And then another. Each pulse leaves a ring. The spacing between those rings, the distance separating them, that encodes information about how fast the comet was ejecting material, how much time passed between each burst. It's like a fossil record written in gas and dust. And here's where it gets really interesting. Here's the key part from today's release that has everyone talking. When scientists look at the outer shells, the ones farther from the nucleus, they can match those up with outburst events that were already known about. They saw those happen. They recorded them. The timing matches up. That all makes sense. But that newest, innermost shell? That doesn't match up with anything in the existing records. The timing of that shell, based on how far it is from the nucleus and how fast it should be expanding, suggests that 3i Atlas fired off at least one major outburst way more recently than anyone realized. This happened after many of the models had already assumed the comet was sliding into a quiet phase. After scientists thought the worst of the activity was behind us. So while everyone was writing the narrative that said, okay, it should be calming down now, the comet itself was quietly launching another significant pulse of material into space, and we're only finding out about it now, after the fact, because that material has expanded far enough to become visible as a distinct shell. The comet has been keeping secrets... Now let's add the third major component of today's data dump, and this is where things really start to paint a complete picture. NASA released updated numbers for what's called the Non-Gravitational Solution for 3i Atlas's Orbit. Let me explain what that means, because it's actually really important. When you track a comet's path through the solar system, you can't just use gravity alone to predict where it's going to go. Comets are constantly venting gas and dust, and when that material shoots off the surface, it acts like a little rocket engine. It pushes the comet, not by a huge amount, but enough that over time it changes the orbit in measurable ways. So orbit fitters, the people who calculate these trajectories, they have to account for that extra push. They have to figure out how much the comet is being shoved around by its own outgassing. And every time NASA releases new observational data, those orbit calculations get updated and refined. In the previous orbital solution, before today, the magnitude of that push, that non-gravitational acceleration, it looked like it was starting to ease up. It looked like the comet was finally letting off the gas, so to speak. But in today's updated solution, it levels out and then it holds steady. The comet is still being shoved by its own jets with almost the same strength as it was days ago. There's been no significant drop-off. It's not relaxing. It's not coasting. It's still actively steering itself through space with continuous outgassing. And all of this, all of this ongoing activity, all of these fresh outbursts and sustained jets, all of this is happening while 3i Atlas is farther from the sun than it was during some of its earlier, supposedly quieter phases of observation. So let's take a step back and put all these pieces together. What do you get when you combine all of this information? You get a picture of an object that is fundamentally not following the simple heat up, flare, cool down arc that we expect from normal comets. You get a comet that refuses to let its activity drop on schedule. 
the way the models say it should. You get a comet that keeps pulsing out bursts of material that leave these visible shells in its wake. And you get a comet that maintains a strong, non-gravitational push, continues to steer itself without gassing, even as the solar energy input steadily falls. That's why today's release is such a big deal. It's not just another data point. It's not just, oh hey, we saw another weird thing. What this data is really saying is that our entire timeline, our whole framework for understanding how this comet should behave, is fundamentally off. We're not just missing details, we're missing something important about the basic physics of what's happening here. So naturally, the big question becomes, what could possibly be keeping 3i Atlas so active? What's driving all of this? There's one idea that's really gaining traction among the researchers, and it has to do with something called delayed heat waves. Let me walk you through this because it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about how heat moves through ice. When 3i Atlas made its closest approach to the sun, that perihelion passage, the surface of the comet heated up really fast. The sun was pounding it with intense radiation, and the outer layers of ice absorbed all that energy. But here's the thing. Ice is actually a pretty poor conductor of heat, so while the surface was getting hot, the deeper layers underneath were still cold. They lagged behind. The heat had to slowly work its way inward. Now, as the comet moves away from the sun, you'd think it would just cool back down, right? The sun is getting farther away, less energy is arriving, so it should cool off. But that wave of stored heat that got absorbed during perihelion, that's still traveling inward. It's still migrating down into the deeper layers of the nucleus, reaching pockets of volatile ice that never saw direct sunlight, ice that's been sitting there frozen for who knows how long. And when those deep pockets hit their critical temperature, when they finally get hot enough that the ice starts to sublimate and turn into gas, they don't care that the comet is technically outbound. They don't care that the sun is farther away now. The heat is right there, right in front of them, and they're going to respond to it. They vent, and that would explain so much of what we're seeing. That would explain why we're still seeing strong carbon dioxide release, because CO2 ice sublimates at lower temperatures than water ice. That would explain why the activity curve has these bumps and plateaus instead of a clean, steady fall-off. It would also explain those layered shells we're seeing in the coma. Each shell could be a snapshot of an internal layer hitting its breaking point at a different time as that heat wave migrates deeper and deeper into the nucleus. But here's where it gets really interesting. And honestly, a little concerning. If this explanation is correct, if the interior of the comet is being activated layer by layer as this heat wave travels inward, then this process isn't over. Not by a long shot. We could see more pulses. We could see more shells form in the coma. We could see the thrust vector, the direction and strength of that non-gravitational push keep shifting as different regions of the nucleus light up and start out gassing. And every single one of those changes adds stress to the comet's structure. There's thermal stress, because different layers are expanding and contracting at different rates as they heat up and cool down. There's mechanical stress, because when you have outgassing from new fractures opening up on the surface, that can actually torque the nucleus. It can change the comet's spin. It can put physical strain on the material holding the whole thing together. And that brings us to the question that today's numbers can't answer yet, the question that's probably on everyone's mind who's following this story closely. How long can 3i Atlas keep doing this before something gives? Is this going to be a gradual process, where it bleeds off all this trapped energy through a series of controlled, layered outbursts over weeks or months? Or is there a tipping point somewhere ahead where one last major pulse pushes the structure past what it can handle? Could this comet actually break apart? Right now, at least publicly, NASA is being pretty measured about all this. The official language they're using is that 3i Atlas remains active at unexpectedly high levels, and that the new features in the coma indicate continuing evolution rather than relaxation. But let me translate that for you, because scientific language tends to be deliberately understated. What they're really saying is this. The new data shows that this comet isn't calming down. At all. The numbers point to an object that is still very much in an active, evolving state, and there's no clear end in sight. So if you were hoping this story was winding down, 
If you thought we were in the final chapter and it was just a matter of watching things fade away quietly, I have to tell you, that's not what's happening. This comet is still talking. The data is still changing. And every new release, every new set of observations, makes 3i Atlas look less like a simple visitor just passing through our solar system on a predictable trajectory, and more like a live experiment in what happens when interstellar ice gets subjected to extreme thermal stress. Think about what this object has been through. It formed in some other star system, potentially billions of years ago. It's been traveling through the cold void of interstellar space, kept at temperatures barely above absolute zero, for longer than we can really comprehend. And then it falls into our solar system, swings in close to our sun, gets hit with this massive thermal shock, and now we're watching in real time as it responds to that shock, we're seeing it wake up, we're seeing it transform, we're seeing it do things that challenge our models and push the boundaries of what we thought we understood about cometary behavior. And the thing is, we're not done yet. The story is still unfolding. In the coming days and weeks, there will be more observations, more data releases, more image stacks showing whether those shells continue to expand, whether new ones form, whether the structure of the coma evolves even further. There will be more spectroscopic measurements telling us what gases are venting and in what quantities. More orbital solutions tracking whether that non-gravitational acceleration stays constant, increases, or finally starts to drop off. And maybe, just maybe, we'll start to see the first real signs of whether this nucleus can hold together under all this stress, or whether we're building towards something more dramatic. Because whatever 3i Atlas is heading toward, wherever this journey ends, NASA's latest data just made one thing absolutely crystal clear. We are nowhere near the end of this story yet. This comet still has things to show us. It's still changing, still evolving, still defying expectations. And those of us watching, those of us following along as this unfolds, we're witnessing something genuinely rare. We're watching an interstellar visitor, a piece of another star system, respond to our sun in ways that surprise even the experts. So that's where we are right now. That's what the new data tells us. 3i Atlas is still active, still pulsing, still refusing to follow the script we wrote for it, and honestly, I can't wait to see what happens next. Because if there's one thing this comet has taught us so far, it's that just when you think you've got it figured out, just when you think you know what comes next, it finds a way to surprise you all over again.